Hello and welcome to the latest in my series of musings on my favourite science fiction novels. I think we're up to number 10 so far. Uh, math was never my strong point. Um, but many thanks to those of you who have watched the previous ones and have left me feedback and discussion on those. I appreciate it very much and if you're new I hope you enjoy this video and consider subscribing. And just a quick note that as always there will be mild spoilers ahead but while I will attempt to avoid the critical details because what I dearly love if you've not read these books is to go and get them and read them. Now today I'd like to return to an author I've previously discussed, the great Robert Silverberg. As he is one of my all-time favourite authors, selecting titles of his is hard to do. And in the fourth video in this series, I covered his time travel tourism romp up the line. But today I'd like to discuss another stone-cold classic of his, The Man in the Maze. Originally serialised in the magazine If in 1968, it was published in novel form in 1969. Now, like many of my favourite science fiction, this story works on many levels. Superficially, it's a kind of an Indiana Jones-ish exploration of a deadly maze on an alien planet. But underneath, it's a dark psychological study of social isolation, of what it means to be human, and the struggle between what's right for oneself versus perceived duty to the group, in this case, humanity. For those interested in the Greek classics, the novel is a science fiction retelling of the Sophocles play, and I'm going to slaughter the name of this, Philosides, Philosides, oh, Philosides, well, you know, look it up. <laughs> So set in an unspecified future, the human race has spread through the galaxy and has colonised multiple planets. Technology is obviously highly advanced and human life has been prolonged by various means. Now these colonies are connected by human diplomats who travel between them, ensuring they remain linked and negotiating uh, problems and issues and so on. Mysterious relics of alien races have been discovered, including an ingenious but lethal maze in an abandoned city on a dead planet. Uh, the purpose of this maze is incomprehensible. However, despite these relics, only once before the events of this story has humankind encountered an actual intelligent alien species. An adventurer diplomat Richard Muller, a long-time dedicated agent of humanity, is sent to contact them. After spending several fruitless months amongst them, seemingly ignored, Muller returns to humanity, but there is a major problem. Somehow the aliens have modified his brain so that all his subconscious thoughts are broadcast out mentally to everyone without filters. Every inner emotion, good or bad, is broadcast. And this makes his very presence unbearable, even repulsive, to other humans. So without a cure, an embittered Muller heads to the planet with the maze and goes into exile by hiding in it. A former faithful servant to humanity is in effect cast out. However, after nine years, a new crisis emerges which makes Muller's former boss, Charles Boardman, seek him out. Humanity needs Muller once again, but there is a huge question mark. Will he want to come back to help the people who cast him out? And indeed, can they even reach him? Muller has sequestered himself in the centre of this city-sized and deadly maze, the only person to ever survive its traps and make it to the centre. So this booby-trapped maze must be penetrated both by robot drones and unavoidably humans, if they are to reach Muller, and many of them die trying. But eventually they, su they succeed in reaching him. Now accompanying Boardman on the mission is Ned Rollins, son of a now dead friend of Muller's. He is tasked with persuading Muller to come out of the maze using the ruse that they have a cure for him. But his conscious com conscience compels him to tell Muller the truth. Eventually. 
They need him, as humanity is threatened by another alien species, one that doesn't see humans as sentient and is busy enslaving human colonies. Their only hope, as they see it, is that Muller, with his mental effusion, will be able to get through to and contact the aliens. Rose wishing to read the novel, and I cannot recommend it highly enough. I will refrain from revealing the conclusions. Um, but as a callow youth, first reading this book, I was obviously attracted to the depictions of the maze, its traps and pitfalls. And indeed, there are many questions there. Who built the maze and why? Where did those aliens go and why is there no other trace of them? Was it some kind of last-ditch defence mechanism against invaders? Or protection for some autocratic ruler? Or did they just build it for pleasure and for fun? But as I got older and subsequently reread the book, and I must have read it a dozen times now at least, I began to appreciate the more philosophical questions Silverberg raised. Why would Muller choose to help the very humanity who rejected him? A deeply personal rejection, as it turned out. Was the revulsion displayed to him on his involuntary mental outpouring because he was a reminder to others of our own human feelings? Was he a mirror, in fact, to our own souls? And we don't like what we see in that mirror. Was Muller treated unfairly, especially by those whom he called friends? He was, after all, a man who had dedicated his life to the service of humanity. And despite their technology, is humankind so insignificant that to even more advanced aliens we appear little more than ants? So this raises many fascinating questions for me regarding our real-life search for alien intelligence in the galaxy. Will communication with aliens be significantly harder than we imagine, if not impossible? Will they in fact be actively hostile to us? and indeed dangerous for us, or as in the book, just not even see us as sentient and casually brush us aside or dominate us. And beyond the fascinating descriptions of the maze and the traps, there is some excellent dialogue between the three protagonists, Muller the embittered hermit, Boardman the cynical manipulator, and the naive idealist. Some examples would be while arguing about the deception to be pulled on Muller, Rollins exclaims, Where's the room for free will in this mechanical universe of yours, Charles? There isn't any. That's why I say the universe stinks, Boardman replies. We have no freedom at all, responds Rollins. Well, the freedom to wriggle a little on the hook, perhaps, says Boardman. And there are some other of my favourite lines of, of any book in this one. Not even hatred can corrode real honour. To hide knowledge is a sin, and as Muller furiously blazes, Homo sapiens, the most dangerous, the most ruthless, the most despicable beast in the universe. Well, thanks for listening. I hope you enjoyed this uh, musing on this classic novel, The Man in the Maze, by Robert Silverberg. I will be back soon with another science fiction classic. Uh, till then... Stay well and remember to look to the future.